So, uh, you know, basically we could have came on here and just started talking about Justin Fields and things like that. But, you know, I'm a little bit burnt out talking about the 49ers. So, you know, I made sure to talk to Jared about let's talk about things that have nothing to do with the 49ers. Let's talk about the NFL because I do love this game as much as I love that team. I'm, I'm just a little bit burnt out about talking about them all week. So, yeah, Jared wanted to start with, is there a growing concern with the Tennessee Titans with what they've lost um, from a team that last year got bumped by the Ravens in – at what I thought was a shocker, you know, because the year before they they bounced them, you know, when everybody thought the Ravens were were basically bulletproof. So, mm-hmm. Jared, talk to me. You know, what's the what's the concern with the Titans? You know, last year Titans Twitter got at my throat when I released um, my season predictions in terms of records. I had Tennessee going six and ten. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, maybe I was just a year early. I mean, you mm-hmm. look at what they've lost this off season. They lost their top three corners. You know, Malcolm Butler and Adoree Jackson are both gone. They traded for Desmond King midseason last year. He's now in Houston. So mm-hmm. right there, you know, you look at the corners on their roster right now, they're starting two. It would be, my guess would be Janoris Jenkins and then Christian Fulton, which that's not horrible, but I mean, you're really relying a lot on Christian Fulton to take a big leap. Janoris Jenkins, obviously a seasoned vet. And then after that, what do you have? So their mm-hmm. secondary just got a lot worse. Their pass rush, yes, they added Danico Autry and Bud Dupree. That's great. But it's almost like they flipped from last year. Last year, their secondary was okay, and their pass rush was horrible. Now, I mean, they seem to address the pass rush, but their their secondary shot. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them sign one of these corners that are still out there because there's still a good bit of them, whether it be mm-hmm. Steven Nelson or Casey Hayward or mm-hmm. uh, something like that. So um, they need to address that heavily. And then you look on the offensive side of the ball, no more Johnny Smith, no more Corey Davis. Always, obviously, A.J. Brown's fan, fantastic, but who else are you going to throw to besides him? Mm-hmm. So, you know, they really need to knock this draft out of the park in, in terms of getting help in the secondary, more offensive weapons for Ryan Tannehill to, to distribute to, because it can't just be the Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown show on offense. you got to have a little bit more depth than that. So Tennessee right now on paper, you know, we can't, you know, obviously pre-draft it's hard to, you know, figure out how teams are going to do throughout the season. But right as it stands right now, they're, uh, they're, they're looking a lot worse than they were than they were last year. Yeah, I mean, and last year, remember, they brought in Clowney, you know, and as you said, the, the pass rush was anemic, the secondary was good. So, you know, there, there's a there's a discussion to be had about whether it's pass rush that saves the secondary or the secondary saves pass rush. So I think this is a good point to, to talk about here. So if the pass rush, you know, ends up being what they believe it'll be with all their additions, then the secondary has less that they have to do, right? I'm more concerned with the offensive side of the ball, right? We understand that, you know, now, well, you know, you've outlined all the losses, Arthur Smith is a loss. Offensive yeah. coordinator now, now head coach for Atlanta, runs a variation of the Shanahan system. Very much, you know, got Ryan Tannehill back on track with the play action and the running game and everything. But I get concerned too about, you know, okay, AJ Brown, monster, you know, mm-hmm. absolute monster. But you're right. Now you have to address in the draft wide receiver two. Uh, you know, is Anthony Ferkser the answer at tight end? I don't know. Um, you know, for as much as for as much as everybody loves John o. Smith's athleticism he was still underutilized just because of how they you know their their run pass their run pass uh numbers are are so skewed it was just straight like you know henry 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 and then play action you know to aj brown right so you know uh there is a lot of concern when it comes to them because you know it's not easy to lose your offensive coordinator it's not easy to lose all of those pieces and now you're talking about you know people in the afc getting a little bit stronger so i'll ask you this question what is the pre- their most pressing need in the draft? What do, what do you expect them in round one to address? Uh, it's got to be corner, right? I mean, where, what are they picking round one? I think it's 22? Uh, I got to check that out. I'll tell you right now. Because I know it's early 20s. They wouldn't pick. If the Steelers are 24, both of them got bounced in the wild card. So it should be around that, that 20. I think it's 23. 20, ooh, 22. 22, Okay. So, I mean, before, I would have said Ed Rusher, go get a guy like you know, Jason Owe or Jalen Phillips. Good morning, Jonathan. Thank you for tuning in. Um, what do you had a very good night. No, mate. I mean, it's just that this hair, it's becoming a problem every morning to deal with. And at this point, I'm just, I'm just waking up and shaking my head. So, but um, in terms of what I, I think cornerback's got to be the pick, I mean, you, somewhere in the secondary at least. And whether yeah. that be if they wanted to add a safety as well, um, if they want to go Trevon Morig. If they want to go a Fatu Um, you know, depends on how on which one of these corners is still left. I mean, I think we all know that J.C. Horn is 
you know, a guy that's going to go, you know, top 12-ish. We're going to have Patrick Sertain go pretty high. So it depends on, you know, how high they are on corners. But if, they, if they're not feeling that, wide receiver could also be an option. We know this is a wide receiver heavy class, so that could sway them to also wait a little bit. But I would say somewhere on the in the secondary would have to be their most pressing need right now simply because of the things that they've lost. So, I mean, would J.C. Horn be somebody that's there at 22? I don't think so. No. Um, would they take a chance on Caleb Farley at 22? Caleb Farley could be fun. And Look, pre-injury – or I guess pre-surgery, you know, Caleb Farley was projected as a top 10 pick. And you look at his 2019 film, it's fantastic. Very sticky, very good in press coverage. So, I mean, there's not too many guys that can say that they're fantastic in man press. And he is one of those guys. So, I think the fall of Caleb Farley, some teams are going to live to regret it. He's one. He's probably my favorite quarter in this draft, at least from watching his tape. So, no, I love Caleb Farley. I think that people are kind of over exaggerating the fact that he had to have his, his knee scoped and whatnot. But now I think that if Caleb Farley's there for them, they would be, I'd be shocked if they didn't take him, especially if he, if he falls that far, which a lot of people are expecting him to do. Um, So at 22, if the Titans went Rashad Bateman, who I love, and I think that everybody is going to wind up looking back at this draft and saying, man, how do we miss out on him? Do you think that that's a possibility at 22 for them? Because man, I, I really would love to see him, you know, across from AJ Brown. That would really be something for the Titans. Beat my dog in the background. Yeah, um, I see him. <laughs> I think Rashad Bateman has all the potential to be maybe the best receiver in this class. And we're going to get into the receivers, and I'll explain it more then. But he's yeah. just the entire package, isn't he? I mean, he's big. He's lanky. He's got great hands. He runs great routes. He could be a red zone threat. Uh, Rashad Bateman's a guy that could definitely go in that spot. Um, again, it just depends on what they value more and how they feel about the guys that they have. Because, I mean, Norris Jenkins isn't a scrub. We know that. He's a seasoned vet. And he's actually re rejuvenated his career because, yeah. there, you know, he was kind of left for dead when he went to the Giants. And, you know, he actually played well over there. And then when he got over to the Saints, he actually played well over there well, too. So, I mean, it's, it, you know, and then the same thing, Malcolm Butler was brought over there after he was already, you know, whatever, past his prime or whatever it is, you know, because people had already kind of left him for dead after he left the Patriots as well, too. So, yeah. And, you know, like I said, we see all the openings on that team at corner. Now they did bring they drafted Christian Fulton at LSU for a reason, obviously. So um, they expect big things from him. So I mean, at this point, if they believe in those top two guys right now, they could the very least just bring in depth at that position because they're not deep at it whatsoever. So um, my guess would be corner. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a, a receiver, especially you know if it is Rashad Bateman. I think that's a good pick. Um, I think they're gonna. You know, I would keep an eye out for maybe Pat Fryermuth going there in the second round if he's there. Okay, uh, I think that that could be a good a good fit for him. Um, so they're going to have to address a lot of spots, but I don't think they're necessarily you know left for dead in terms of this. I mean, the draft can fix a lot of their issues, um, and the thing that they have going for them is that they play in the AFC South. You know, you're going to play Houston twice a year. That's probably two wins right there. They're going to play Jacksonville twice a year. That's at least one win. You know, right. I think Jacksonville's going to be better, so I mean, you can make the argument that they could take one game from them. But well, they can't be worse. Yeah, no. So I mean, <laughs> and then they always play Indianapolis tough. So I mean, that's at least we could probably pencil in at least four wins for them right now, mm -hmm. just because of the division that they play in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just think that there's a lot of holes that they have left vacant simply because guys have left, and um, you know, not a lot of people have really been paying attention to that. I mean, I mean, with the entire. Fields thing going on right now, and the Niners pick and everything. That's really all anyone's been talking about. But now Tennessee is, is is a very well a team that could take a step back in twenty twenty, especially in a stacked AFC. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it's a good conversation because you know, I, you know, again, I love the 49ers, but I love talking about other football teams because then you start to get into you know what do they need, where what, what's going on with them, and and uh, it's a nice little break to to talk about uh, you know somebody else other than Justin Fields and have me mm -hmm. yelling into the camera about it. So, 